The following program is presented with closed captioning available. This is a service of Maricopa College's television, channel 115. From the Maricopa Community College campuses to your home, this is Maricopa Now. Here are some of the stories you'll see. From fitness to finance, seniors enjoy lifelong learning at Rio Salado College. People from all walks of life share their stories at Glendale Community College's Human Library. Plus, artists from an internationally known pottery village visit Paradise Valley Community College. And there's so much more on this edition of Maricopa Now. Now, from Studio A at Scottsdale Community College, here is your host, Kim Getz. Happy holidays and welcome to our show. Older adults are learning and staying active through the various courses and activities offered at the RISE Lifelong Learning Center. Erica White has the story from Rio Salado College. As the saying goes, you're never too old to learn. And that can be true for adults at the RISE Lifelong Learning Center in Surprise. Here, adults ages 60 to 90 are learning while having fun. We approximately have over 1,200 members from the greater Sun Cities area, although it's open to membership anywhere in Maricopa County. Rio Salado College has been partnered with RISE since 1994, and the program has continued to grow ever since. We're constantly, constantly expanding and growing. RISE officials credit part of the growth of the program to its passionate instructors. People with a passion for their subject, people who truly love teaching and love being around other people. And that's what RISE is built on. Do um, fixed annuities, are those FDIC protected? No. There are about 200 instructors and none of them are paid. The same energy the instructors bring, the members are able to give right back. Well, you offer such an outstanding variety of classes that we we reach into every type of learning discipline imaginable. With more than 300 different types of classes across all subjects, it would be quite hard for a RISE member not to find something that interests them. Throughout the year, members can choose from various subjects including the arts, social science, financial, and even health and wellness classes like Tai Chi. Esther Thomas is one of many RISE members who enjoys Tai Chi. It's very subtle yet you get a great workout. A great workout with added benefits. It's a brain exercise, so it teaches us to use different brain cells, which we lose in our older ages. Left and right, it really helps. For some like Esther, it's the health benefits, but for most, it's a social interaction that brings them back. A lot of our RISE members perhaps don't have someone else at home, and this is it. This is their social network. Reporting for Maricopa Now, I'm Erica White. For more information about the RISE Lifelong Learning Center, visit riosolato.edu. In traditional Chinese medicine, it's better to prevent disease than to cure it. This philosophy is presented in a community education course called Healing with Chinese Food, Diet, and Herbs. Deanne Kincaid had this story from Mesa Community College. When health concerns require a change of diet, many Americans visit their local oriental market. However, the vast array of foreign products may seem a bit intimidating. You can find the helpful guidance you need in a class called Chinese Diet and Herbs, taught by Dr. Ruth Tan Lim. She is an MD and licensed homeopath who practices integrated medicine. Since I'm Chinese from Singapore, I think it's good for people to know about what is the difference between Chinese and the American diet. Dr. Lim explains that Chinese medicine is based on qi, which is the life force energy that flows in all things. Qi comes from three sources, the first being from your ancestors. And then when you breathe in, you get the qi from the lung. Then it will combine with the qi from the food that you eat. And then to roll together, they'll give you the qi for your day-to-day -day function, making your heart beat. This life force, or qi, can be improved through the use of herbs. What are the common herbs that the Chinese like to use to help them not only in their day-to-day -day use, but actually to better their qi and to rebalance themselves and for longevity. One of them is ginseng, the other one is donggui, the third is uh, cordyceps, the fourth is astragalus, and the fifth is actually forty. Dr. Lim says that these five herbs often work best in combinations. In Chinese herbology, 
They usually don't have a standalone herb. The only one is the king. It's called ginseng. Learning the basic herbs is a start. Next, dietary changes will require new food choices. Many a times they really know, need to know how to shop for what things when they go to an oriental market. This class includes an exciting field trip to Lili Oriental Market. So now they can see the real vegetables. They also can see the Chinese herbs. So this is ginseng uh, in the patented form in a capsule. It becomes an herbal supplement. And ginseng combo, combo for super tonic. It's always to replenish your chi. Today's trends show a shift from a traditional Western diet to a healthier plant-based diet. And looking at the Asian culture and the people, they stay young, they don't really gain a lot of weight. So there's something to their diet. Dr. Lim explains the myriad of products on the shelves. Now this is the one that we need to know. This is the foti, the so -u. You see they have the tablet form now. And they have the, the, the uh, herb herbal form. She says that tea made from futi can be bitter. This is a dry licorice. To make it sweet, okay, dry licorice. Fresh produce can provide body cleansing benefits. There was quite a variety, and it was interesting to know, like the watercress. You know, Dr. Lim said it was good for detoxing. It's called watercress. What do you, well, how do you put it? Oh, you just boil it with water. And then just, and just eat it and drink it. What I learned today was a lot of things about some different herbs, herbal remedies for high blood pressure, cholesterol, headaches. Everybody could benefit from the knowledge that Dr. Lim is sharing with us to improve on our health. For more information on this class and other community education classes, go online at mesacc.edu slash cce. I'm Deanne Kincaid reporting for Maricopa Now. Coming up on Maricopa Now, Chef Griffiths shows us how to prepare a traditional French holiday dessert. Stay with us. If you want to see the other side of the earth, then travel with 180 View here on MCTV. Tune in and take a journey from Arizona to the Ukraine. Compare lifestyles, architecture, the land and traditions when we look at each culture and learn about our differences. 180 View is seen on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For airtimes, go to maricopa.edu slash MCTV. I don't think of myself as a teacher. I, I think of being a part of the profession that I'm lucky enough that I get to take the knowledge that I've learned over the years, the research, and then help facilitate that in students and get them to see the practical application of things like philosophy. I mean, I got a great job. I get to teach Aristotle, I get to teach uh, Nietzsche, and, and then I get to show students why that kind of information is important and how they can look at the world in a different way. And, what I think is really is the best part about my job is when students all of a sudden get it. They, they, you're going struggling with an idea for them that's quite abstract, something that they weren't used to, and then all of a sudden they're like, wow, this is great. You realize that 49 million Americans struggle with hunger? That's one out of every six Americans. These people are around us every day. They're our friends, they're our coworkers, their kids go to school with our kids. Sometimes we're not even aware that they're struggling. This problem is closer than you think. So is the solution. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. I look for someone who is passionate about their study. Um, a couple instructors come to mind. Actually, uh, my geology instructor, Professor Schieser, you can tell that he's very passionate about his study and he does these things with these students, you know, that it's more like he's connecting with them. It's not like he's just dishing out a bunch of information. It's like he makes sure that, you know, you get it and he'll, you know, he'll keep going over it and going over it until you, he knows that you understand. I like instructors like that, that will connect to a student, you know, and not necessarily just lecture. Students are able to check out books from Glendale Community College's Human Library. The Human Library is a way to encourage dialogue and promote understanding with one another. Amanda Munoz takes us into the life of one of these human books. My mom is from Chadburn. Telling a story, an exchange of experiences. 
It's something we all do on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's very rare that we open up to a complete stranger. Sharonda has never known what it is like to see. I was born blind, optic nerve hypoplasia. The nerves were not developed in my eyes. I also have nystagmus, which means that my eyes move without my control. Stephen will never know what it's like to not see. She's having to live her entire life without being able to see. You know, to, to look out there and see the flowers, the sky, the night sky, the stars, everything like that, you, know, you take that kind of stuff for granted. She doesn't get to experience all that like we do. Sharonda is sharing her experience living visually impaired. She's telling her story from beginning to end, like an open book. And an open book is exactly what Glendale Community College had in mind when they put together the Human Library. We're really trying to bring our community together and seek understanding of one another. And because it's face to face, you're not deleted. Students aren't the only ones who walk away with an impression. Even in 16 foster families, your mom was arrested in front of you, you choose to work in a homeless shelter. It, stories over and over again about how I took what was kind of crummy and turned it into something that would better my world. The human library concept is a person sharing their experience as if they were a book that the student checks out. The books range from the hearing impaired to a former drug addict and prostitute to a transgender. Sharonda is not only proud of her story. Oh, I'm, I'm never nervous about talking about this. She teaches blind people how to use access technology. This iPhone is amazing. While Sharonda does admit she's passionate about technology, she says teaching blind people to use an iPhone is not what she's in this for. The real issue is helping them to know that there is life after becoming blind. To know that you can live a rich and full and complete life. And that is what it's really all about. After a 30-minute session between Sharonda and Steven, a connection has been made. Because, I mean, you know, shoot, Starbucks is closed. Oh, no, Starbucks is closed. And we're, we have the whole day's messed up because of that. Well, she wakes up with no vision. It's just something, Sharonda says. Uh, it really has nothing to do with me as much as I just enjoy pouring into other people. That's not out of the ordinary for her. For Maricopa Now, I am Amanda Munoz. The Human Library is popular in Europe. Glendale Community College is one of the few colleges in the United States to participate. From two-a-days to game day, Inside Maricopa Sports is your ticket to Maricopa Athletics. Get a sideline view of the game and see behind the scenes of the Maricopa teams. Learn more about the coaches and see how players achieve on the field and in the classroom. Catch the action all season long with Inside Maricopa Sports only on MCTV, Cox Cable Channel 115. For times, visit our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. Hi, I'm Cookie, and today's Fit Tip is all about how to buy resistive tubing and why. Resistive tubing is a great tool for creating some strength in your routine. It's a little bit different than a free rate because it has memory, which means as you pull it apart, it resists two directions. It's a great tool to use. But how do you know which color you should be purchasing? Originally, when the industry put these out, the lighter the color, the less the resistance. And the darker the color, the more the resistance. Unfortunately, today, with the many companies that are putting this product out, you may actually have to try it in the store before you buy it. Probably not advantageous for some stores, but I would ask if it's all right if you try the band before you purchase it. So once you have the band, how do we use it? Understand that using a tube is created, the tension is created by the lever, the length of the lever. So the longer the lever, the easier the exercise. The shorter the lever, the harder the exercise. So let's do an example. If I take the yellow band, which would be my lighter resistance, and I place it on the floor. I'm seated, so I'm shorter than I would be if I'm standing. And now I'm only gonna put one foot on the band. I'm gonna go ahead and use a bicep curl for an example. My elbows connect, and I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that band. You're gonna notice it's very, very easy to use. So to make this a little harder, I would add two feet, shortening the lever again. 
we're gonna use that same bicep curl. If I wanna make this exercise even harder, I would take my feet a little bit wider. Now the lever is shorter, it's gonna be a little bit harder. So now that you've done this seated, I want you to try it standing up. We're gonna slide the band out from under your feet. We're gonna stand up and go to the side of your chair. Remembering that the longer the lever, the easier the exercise. I want you to go ahead and slide one foot under the band. Making sure it's secure underneath the arch of your foot. We're gonna do the same exercise, bicep curl. And as you pull up and lower down, I want you to be aware that the most important thing is that you are running this tool. The tool is not running you. And what I mean by that is you wanna have the same rate as you lift and lower. So you don't wanna pull the band up and have it pull you down. You wanna lower that band. To make it a little bit harder, we're gonna add that second foot. So we're shortening the lever each time. The exercise will get a little bit harder. Making sure that you're breathing, you're exhaling as you're pulling up, inhale as you're lowering. And finally, to make this a little bit harder, we're gonna take the feet apart. Same exercise again. We're just making it a little bit harder. I'm Cookie, and that's your Fit Tip for today. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. Cute little rascal. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals. Oh, ladies first. Eager to become a part of your family. To find out more, visit theshelterpetproject.org. This is Maricopa News Law. Australia Mountain Community College's new fire academy trains future firefighters needed in the Southwest Valley. The college partnered with the Avondale and Goodyear Fire Departments to provide firefighter training and certification. During the week, classes are on campus, and on Saturday, students train at the Avondale Goodyear Fire Training Facility. For more information about the Fire Academy, call 623-935-8446 or visit australiamountain.edu. It was a food day celebration at Rio Salado College. A farmer's market, cooking demonstrations, and informational booths were part of the festivities. The sustainable food programs at Mesa and Rio Salado College hosted the second annual event, joining others nationwide to promote healthy, affordable, and sustainable food. For more information about the sustainable food programs, visit mesacc.edu or riosalado.edu. Yeah. Paradise Valley Community College recently unveiled its new state-of-the-art health sciences building. To celebrate the occasion, nursing, EMT, paramedic, and theater students enacted a lifelike trauma simulation. This new facility provides a real-world environment for students to learn. For more information about the health programs, visit paradisevalley.edu slash HES. Gateway Community College celebrated the grand opening of its integrated education building. This new 120,000 square foot learning and gathering space includes classrooms, a one-stop shop for student services, community library, and career center. The Maricopa Skills Center celebrated the grand reopening of its newly remodeled and expanded campus. In addition to the new look, the campus offers new health care programs. Students can train for careers as an assisted living caregiver, nursing assistant, and an ophthalmic assistant. We have partnered with Barnett Delaney as well as Southwest Eye. They had actually come to us and asked us to consider starting this program because they need trained individuals. For more information about these programs, visit MaricopaScaleCenter.com. Congratulations to cosmetology student Trina Thomas. She won first place in the Vidal Sassoon competition in Scottsdale. Representing the Maricopa Skill Center, Thomas competed against students from local cosmetology schools in the areas of cut and color. So my inspiration was fire, and I called it the reinvention of fire. So uh, with my model, the way that the color was put in, if you comb it to the left, it was lighter, and to the right, it was darker. Thomas won five days of training at the Vidal Sassoon Salon in Beverly Hills, worth $1,300. And that's Maricopa News Log. Let's check in with Chef Griffiths. You'll love this holiday dessert. So today we're going to make a classic holiday dessert, a Bush de Noel, eaten mainly around Christmas time. And basically, this is a cake that looks like a Yule log. And what I'm going to do is heat up some egg yolk, 
some whole eggs, and some sugar. And I'm just gonna warm up these eggs. So if I've taken them out of the fridge, and they're about 40 degrees, we're gonna warm these eggs up to about body temperature, anywhere between 98 and 110 degrees. See, I got a nice light foam working here. And I'm gonna let the mixer do the rest of the work. While those eggs are mixing, I'm gonna preheat my oven. I'm now gonna do basically the same thing to the egg whites, except I'm not gonna heat these. So my egg whites are about halfway to a meringue, and by halfway, I mean that they're starting to turn an off-white color, and they kind of look like soap. Now when I add my sugar, I'm gonna add it slowly. I'm not gonna add it all at once. I'm gonna start by lightening up my whole eggs with the meringue. I'm gonna fold this in. Next thing I'm gonna do is incorporate flour. This is gonna help give us some strength. So once again, I'm picking up that flour and I'm kinda of shaking it out. I'm gonna put this onto the sill plat now. I'm gonna pour the entire thing over. So there is our sponge cake ready for the oven. We're gonna bake it at 400 degrees and let it cool down while we make the buttercream and the garnish. So our cake has been baked and it only takes about five to six minutes. So we'll be making a basic chocolate buttercream to fill this bush de Noël. So I'm starting to soften up some unsalted butter. <clears throat> I now wanna lighten it and sweeten it with some powdered sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla. And then I'm also gonna add some meringue powder. A small amount of the buttercream into the chocolate. We're gonna make some meringue mushrooms as well as some marzipan holly. I've made a French meringue here, basically egg whites and sugar. Whipped them up to a nice stiff peak. And I'm gonna have to put them into a pastry bag with a plain tip. So for the tops, I'm just gonna pipe until I get a dome shape. And then for the stems, think about think of a pear shape. So I'm gonna let it drop and then pull up. So a little bit smaller. Next is holly. So what I've done here is made marzipan. Marzipan is basically just almond paste with some powdered sugar added, along with some food coloring. And I'm gonna start off with the berries. And then I can roll out some green leaves. And then just take a wooden dowel and begin to roll it out. So our garnish is done, our buttercream is done, and the sponge cake is cooled. We've carefully removed it from the pan and off the sill plat onto a piece of parchment paper or wax paper if you have it at home. I'm gonna apply a thin layer of buttercream. And then we're gonna begin the process of rolling this up. And I'm going to begin to gently get a nice tight roll. I'm going to transfer this onto a sheet pan to do the final icing. We can then put a little bit of detail into this with a simple fork. And then we're going to let this chill down for just a little bit to set up that buttercream before we put the finished detail on. If you want to create a little bit of snow on this, we can just take some confectionery sugar and a tea strainer and begin to tap away. And I can begin to apply the leaves. In they go. And then we have some mushrooms. We'll put a couple here on top.
sponge cake and chocolate buttercream, and then just some fun garnish on top to make it look fun for the family, right? Chef's Menu is brought to you by the Culinary Studies Program at Estrella Mountain Community College. For today's recipe, please visit this address. Community colleges often bring in guest speakers to help advance a student's understanding of a subject. Each year at Paradise Valley Community College, a team of internationally known artists from Mata Ortiz, Mexico, share their secrets with students about an art form that's more than 700 years old. Jesus Hernandez tells us more. With every pot Lorenzo Borghini prepares, he ensures the continuation of his art. With every stroke of her brush, Lucy Mora advances an art form passed down through generations. Together as a husband and wife team, they represent the artists of the town of Mata Ortiz in northern Mexico, a community recognized internationally for the quality and creativity of the ceramic art they create. Professor David Bradley has visited Mata Ortiz and ranks the ceramic artists with the best in the world. I've seen it in galleries and, um, and museums all over the world, and it's very distinctive, and um, quality can't be beat. It's, it's, it's jewel-like. Just beautiful, beautiful work. And it's just, just amazing. It doesn't look like tourist pottery. It's not tourist pottery. This is definitely art pottery of the highest quality. Mata Ortiz is a small community in northern Mexico. For hundreds of residents, creating and designing pottery is a way of life, a precious artistic tradition preserved for generations and taught to new artists by grandparents, parents, siblings, or friends. In the Mata Ortiz tradition, the ceramic forms they create are all made from native clay and paints. All are shaped by hand without a potter's wheel. Many artists use the techniques perfected by Juan Quisada. Quisada is credited for bringing back the art of making pottery, an art that nearly disappeared. Um, an artistic sensibility of, of beauty, of, of how to make use of the things around them to create something new and wonderful. Lucy Mora's fascination with pottery making started at a young age. She says she would watch her mother making pottery and was encouraged to explore and experiment. Lucy's style is her own. The designs that she creates begin with one line and the rest is left to her imagination. Cuando uno se pone a pintar, solamente sabe que va a pintar, pero el dibujo se va dando. Cuando uno empieza, pues empieza con una línea, no sé si vería ahorita. When adding the design to the pottery, Lorenzo says they use brushes they make from the hair of one of their youngest daughters. 30, 20, 40 se, se el palito y no, ya. Lucy and Lorenzo are encouraging their daughters to learn the art of making pottery. They would be the fourth generation to continue the art form. Ellas quieren ya trabajar y todo como las de ahorita ya hacen sus cosas, pero no las dejo todavía mucho. After 700 years of making beautiful pottery, Mata Ortiz artists continue to impress the art community worldwide. For Maricopa Now, this is Jesus Hernandez. And that's our show. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to stay tuned to MCTV for our great lineup of shows, including Inside Maricopa Sports and 180 View. Also, check out our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv and click on DestTube. DestTube allows you to watch this show and all of our regularly produced programs anytime you wish. Until next time, take care. Don't touch that remote. MCTV has more great programming coming right up. Join MCTV every day for Inside Maricopa Sports in Foque and Tufaturo and our daily community calendar update in the district.